Brothers and sisters, it is time for the Word of God. Amen. At this time, our zoning bishop, Jerome Strickland, is coming to present our leader. Let's say amen for him as he comes. The Lord is good. And his mercy endure forever. Tonight, I want to emphasize to you the leadership that the Lord has given Arkansas Second Jurisdiction of Arkansas. Let me preface my saying by saying this. Arkansas has been the birthplace, the seedbed of great leadership. We have birth presiding bishops, general board members, national officials. Yes. We have birth, yes. global evangelists, yes. and great leaders worldwide. In 1950, Bishop Manor Jones, who was over the state of Arkansas, God gave him the wisdom to divide the state. And the state brought forth six districts. Bishop W.A. Washington, Served one day. one day. Bishop W. H. Kendrick, six years. Yes. Bishop John L. Lewis, ten years. Bishop R. B. Hadley, six years. And fathering Bishop Hadley, Bishop Donnie L. Lindsay, Woo! who served our jurisdiction yes. 35 plus years. Yes. And then, and then, from the midst came forth a leader that in September 2009 God brought forth the sixth intercession the Honorable Bishop Frank Jefferson Anderson Jr. This man of God he had the spirit of Elisha a second anointing. Yeah. The spirit of Joshua. A spirit of commitment and dedication. And through his leadership, we have moved from 15 districts to 23 districts. And thank God for his dynamic and awesome leadership. Let me give you a little history about this man of God, who has a big heart and humble spirit, called to the ministry at the age of 18, started his first radio ministry at the age of 19, known throughout Arkansas and the surrounding states of a man with a pool, and all you had to do was step in the pool and received a miracle from God. And ever since then, since 1966, he has given the Arkansas Second Jurisdiction leadership. And we thank God for this man of God. He served in many areas. I, I don't have the time to tell you the areas. But like Paul said, you know my life. You've seen, you seen the work I've done. Bishop Anderson, we thank God for you. We thank God for his leadership, his family. And I pray that you will pray with me that God would anoint him as never before on this night to speak to the people of God. Is there a word from the Lord? There is a word from the Lord. Thank you, and may God bless this humble man. And may I call him the right reverend, the honorable yeah. Bishop Frank Jefferson Anderson, 
Julia. Preceding him would be our jurisdictional choir, after which we would stand together and receive our pastor, our prelate, our bishop, the president of the Second Jurisdiction Church of God in Christ Incorporated, this man, this servant of the Lord. Let the choir come forth.
in us. If God has done anything for anybody in here, I want you to shout glory. If he woke you up this morning, shout glory. been able to testify. When you got your mask on, turn to somebody and testify. Come on. You got your mask on. Come on. Yes. <laughs> 
Jesus. There is satanic prayer. Hold against me. Tell them, say, go back. Tell them, go back to your cinder in the name of Jesus. I refuse to reap in a satanic heart in the name of Jesus. You devil. Tell me, say, you devil. Hear me. And hear me well. You cannot steal my blessings anymore in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for answering my prayers in the name of Jesus. Now, you better say this. I am what he say I am.
subject again. So then we said moving through a pandemic and coming back strong, what happened is we got relaxed. We got relaxed. People more concerned about the bars being open. That's all they talked about, the bars being open. The news. Amen. They was jumping and shouting about, we can go do this now. But COVID catches right here. Even when we get it under control, COVID will still be with us. The measles are still with us. Smallpox. Those are virus. So even though we get this thing under control through vaccination, we still will have COVID with us. COVID is just like the flu. The flu is a virus. And every year the flu comes back. COVID don't come back. But we just got to know how to navigate it. As a church, as a people, through this pandemic. It's a pandemic because it's worldwide. Amen. Lord, help us tonight. February of 2020, we start hearing about a virus that was coming out of Wuhan, China. I have a president called it the China virus. We didn't think much about it because the president kept talking it down. Saying it was a hoax. And it would be over by Easter. Easter came. And the numbers kept going up. Soul of the other good to the senators, congressmen. And they start spreading the same thing that the president is a hoax. Lord help us. But uh, somewhere between February, April, May, June, sporting events start shutting down. Entertainment centers start closing down. Finally, the churches. In my life, I couldn't even, could not ever remember no service on Easter. Mother Day came, no celebration. Father Day came, no celebration. The news start coming in about people dying. Bishops. Supervisors, superintendents, pastors, lay members in the church of God in Christ. Someone even tried to say that God was working against the church of God in Christ. It's not that, that was, that's what was happening. It's because we are a fellowship in church. When Bishop Withers had his meeting, we're over there. When we have our meeting, they're over here. Yes. And that's what was going on in Michigan, uh -huh. Mississippi, uh -huh. Louisiana, uh -huh. all of those areas because we fellowship. Yes. And we were not really paying attention to how deadly this thing was. Because we were listening not to the experts, but to the president. Therefore, we lost loved ones. And 
the sad thing was that we couldn't even be there the whole day while they made their transition. Couldn't even go to the hospital to see them. Sad thing, our elders in the nursing home who lived to see us come by. We couldn't go by. And I thought it was sad that you had to sit out, stand outside the window and watch your loved one through a window glass. Somebody said, Lord, help us. Uh, we said that what we need to do said I'm that fear people start being afraid. We told our congregation that perfect love cast out all fear. But somebody said, yeah, but Pastor, I'm scared. <laughs> Everywhere we look, we saw fear. The news was scary. There's a fear in the people's eyes. We started looking to the Bible for the answer to this crisis. There is now a pandemic. God gave us his word in Isaiah, the 43rd chapter. We found courage in this beautiful assurance for the days to come. This is what it says. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by my name. You are mine. When you pass through the water, I'll be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. Lord, help us. We need to know that in the midst of all of this that's going on, that there is a God. And we're not going to just barely come out of this. We're coming out strong. You better tell somebody I'm coming out of this. And I'm coming out strong. Tell God thank you somebody. The movement that we saw, the thing that was happening, looked like our churches was going to New Zealand. But when this thing hit us, no, we were not prepared. And look like right now, we're being thrown back. And we really don't know what the next few days are going to bring. Amen. Amen. But since we have learned how to navigate, since we have learned that the mass helps us. Since we learned that social distance helped us. Since we know, learned that washing our hand, wash my hand so much my hand was looking at me. Like what well, I done done wrong. Turning a different color. So then, in the midst of this thing, we got to learn how to do new things. Yes, sir. Now we're talking about getting back to normal. There will not be the normal that we know. We will never get back, amen, to 2019. 2020. Up until now have changed the way we do things. Am I right about it? The government, when things
things start shutting down. The government even came all the way down to the churches and told us that we could have no more than 10 people. We did everything that we could to keep people together. Thank God for Facebook. Thank God for social media. And some of you have learned TikTok. <laughs> yeah, I keep up. <laughs> but in the midst of all of the things that's going on, we found out that more people start praying. The scripture was quoted more than ever before. If my people to call on my name would humble themselves. We got too many, amen, folk in the house of God that's not humble. Turn! 
wheelchair watching Facebook Live. Ain't had to buy no new dress. because God is in control, a church where God is really real. Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services. 